dear students so this is lecture number 5 on the topic shift turbine in this lecture uh, we are going to discuss about the losses in the steam turbine and the governing of the steam turbines so far in the previous lectures we have discussed the working of single stage impulse turbine working of um, multi stage impulse turbine that is velocity compounded turbine pressure compounded turbine uh, velocity and pressure compounded turbine uh, we discuss the reaction turbine working of the reaction turbine and power produced or work produced by the reaction turbine and we solved few problems on the impulse turbine and the reaction turbine and when the turbine is working so the turbine the steam turbine uh, consists of a casing it consists of a shaft it has the rotor nozzle stator blade and in the shaft we have the bearing and uh, there are various uh, components in the steam turbine when the steam turbine is working there are different types of losses we have to uh, consider we have to analyze uh, so for the better design of the uh, steam turbine or better uh, maintenance or operation of the steam turbine the first type of nozzle is the uh, loss is the nozzle losses loss occurs in the nozzle Uh, the in any steam turbine at the entrance there is a nozzle there is a set of nozzles the main purpose of the nozzle is to convert the enthalpy of the steam into velocity so the pressure decreases across the nozzle velocity increases so the uh, the kind of loss in the nozzle is the frictional losses the main loss in the uh, nozzle is the frictional losses the effect of the frictional losses is reducing or decreasing the velocity of the steam at the outlet of the nozzle so the nozzle loss it is only due to the friction between the steam uh, and the the surface of the nozzle then uh, blade friction losses this occurs in the rotor blade uh, or fixed blade rotor blade or fixed blade so the blade is a metal surface either this is a, a moving blade or a fixed blade it is a metal surface it is made by nickel chromium steel highly the surfaces are highly polished but then there are frictional losses the contact the fluid is making contact with the surface of the uh, blade so there is uh, the contact and the because of the contact because the fluid is sliding over the uh, blade surfaces there are frictional losses so the effect of the frictional losses in the fixed blade or moving blade is loss of energy uh, altogether there will be loss of efficiency of the machine and the mechanical friction losses so this occurs in the end bearing i said there is a shaft in the steam turbine the rotate and the, all the rotor blades are attached to the shaft the shaft is supported in the casing at the end so at the end the casing and the shaft they are connected by means of the bearings so the bearing you already studied bearing is a device or the component which permits the relative motion between the two mechanical surfaces so there there is frictional losses mechanical frictional losses and the leakage losses the steam inside the turbine it is very high pressure it is at high pressure the outside is atmospheric pressure so there is every possibility of the leakage of the steam because of the pressure difference so uh, we have the gland we have uh, air tight joint in the steam turbine uh, despite there will be some leakages of the steam so there is what the leakages leakage losses then moisture loss the steam expands in the turbine so because of the expansion uh, the steam quality decreases right at the one particular stage uh, the steam Uh, becomes wet steam it may contain some moisture so the loss due to the moisture uh, the, that is called as moisture losses radiation losses uh, the finally the radiation losses the steam turbine inside the steam is at a higher temperature the casing the metal parts are heated so the there is there is radiation heat loss from the hot metal surfaces hot casing body body of the steam turbine that is what called as radiation losses so nozzle loss blade friction losses 
mechanical friction losses, leakage losses, moisture losses, and radiation losses. These are all the different types of losses in the ship turbine. Then governing of the ship turbine. So what is the governing? Governing is maintaining the steam turbine speed. The speed of the steam turbine at constant value irrespective of the uh, load on the turbine. Uh, that is what the governing. There are three different types of governing. The first governing is throttle governing. The throttle governing is used in the impulse turbine. So look at the diagram. We have a governor, centrifugal governor. Uh, we know the component of the centrifugal governor. There are fly balls at the sleeve. Uh, and there is a lever at the center we have a pivot the lever is connected to the control valve in the control valve there are three opening on the left side so all the three opening are connected to the oil sump at the middle pipe you have a gear oil pump on the right side you have two opening opening a it goes to the servo motor right side of the plunger of the servo motor opening b it goes to the left side of the plunger of the servo motor and you have a plunger at the end of the plunger you have a spear the spear opens or closes the steam nozzle now in the normal operating condition the steam fly balls everything is perfect and there is the, there is a sufficient steam flow to the turbine uh, for the for producing the power so when the design when the steam turbine is running at a design speed design power uh, there won't be any deviation when suddenly the speed uh, i mean load ink decreases load of the turbine is decreases when the load decreases the speed will increase when the speed is increasing these fly balls will move in the upward direction fly in the upward direction as they are flying in the upward direction the sleeve is moving in the upward direction the sleeve is moving the left portion of the lever is moving in the upward direction the right portion of the lever is moving downward because of the pivot it is this is moving downward this is when this is moving downward the valve b is open open to the gear oil pump open to the central pipeline so while b is open the piston the entire unit is moving downward b is open the oil from here it is flowing to the valve b and reaches here so this will make the plunger to move forward and the spear will close the nozzle so when the load increases we have to reduce the steam flow so the spear will move forward and close the nozzle uh, so that the steam flow to the turbine it is reduced it is running uh, with the reduced uh, power re reduced steam flow it is running then suddenly the load increases uh, load increases so we have to supply more amount of steam when the load increases the speed will decrease when the speed decreases the fly ball will go down when the fly balls are moving downward the sleeve will move downward the lever will move downward this portion will move in the upward direction now the valve a is open when the valve a is open the oil from here it moving to the right side of the plunger so the plunger is moving backward so there will be sufficient opening to admit more amount of steam to the steam turbine that is what the throttle governing so based on the load either the sleeve is moving upward or the downward valve a is open or the b is open so it will admit it will control the spear so for admitting either more quantity of steam or lesser quantity of steam depending on the requirement and this is nozzle governing and this is used in the reaction turbine uh, if you look at here you have a number of nozzles so first set of nozzle second set of nozzle and the third set of nozzle in a ring of nozzles so Actually, this is the one set of nozzle, one, one row of the nozzle at the beginning of the uh, turbine. And each set of nozzle, for example, N1 is controlled by V1, N2 is controlled by V2, and the V3 is here. Here we have V3. So this V3 is controlling the N3. So in the normal operating condition, all the nozzles are working. So the steam flows to the entire turbine. When the steam, when the power reduces, when the work load on the turbine reduces, depending on the reduction, either we close valve V1, valve V2, or valve V3. When the valve V1 is closed, so there is no steam flow to the nozzles N1. So these two are working, so the power production is reduced. So the 
when the load increases again we open the v1 so that you admit the steam to the nozzle so depending on the power reduction either we cut the valve v1 close valve v2 or close valve v3 depending on the magnitude of the power reduction change in the load so this is used in the uh, the nozzle control governing is used in the reaction turbine and this is bypass governing uh, now look at here so you have the throttle valve you have the throttle valve the steam is admitted and at the beginning at the entrance you have bypass valve here so you have rotor stator everything so you have a nozzle nozzle rotor rotor and then three rotors when now actually when the load decreases when the load decreases so we are opening the bypass valve and the small portion of the steam is flowing through the bypass line and it uh, Admit is admitted to the lower stages. Either this is entering further to the turbine or it is leaving without meeting the turbine, depending on the load conditions. So, this is what called as bypass governing. We have based on the load, when the load decreases, we have to bypass the, we have to open the bypass valve and uh, bypass the steam without meeting the rotor of the turbine. So, the three governing methods so, throttle governing, nozzle governing, and then uh, bypass governing. These are the three governing methods. The main purpose of the governing is to control the speed, maintain the speed as a constant irrespective of the load on the turbine. So, thank you very much.